My name is Dr. Mary Case, and, and I'm the Chief Medical Examiner in St. Louis County, St. Charles, Jefferson, and Franklin Counties. What I do in my job is to investigate deaths, and unfortunately, one of the most common things that we see in children, uh, of, of children that die, is that they have died from injuries to the head, and, and a fairly large number of those cases are cases that have been shaken. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the child's head. Uh, so you can understand why shaking or impacting or doing certain things to the head of a child might be damaging. When, when you think of a baby, it's very different than, than an adult or an older child. It has a very large, heavy head, and that head is sitting on a neck that is very weak. You know that when you pick up a baby, you support the head uh, because it doesn't have any, any strength in the neck. And the reason for doing that is to keep the head from flopping around. Inside of the head is a very soft brain. A baby's brain is about the consistency of unset gelatin. And if you make movement inside the cranial cavity where the brain can actually begin to move, that can cause portions of the brain, some of the actual structural, structural elements of the brain to tear, what we call the axons. Those are the connections between the nerve cells. One of the ways that they can be easily torn is if the head moves very abruptly. And if you think of the action of shaking a baby where the head is being whiplashed back and forth, or if you do something to the baby's head to strike it and make it move, or if you took a baby and threw it, and in the head moving and then stopping very abruptly, you can cause motion of the brain inside the cranial cavity. If you think about a glass of water, that's a perfect example to kind of understand what happens inside of the baby's head. If you agitate and move rapidly the glass of water, you can make the water actually splash out of the glass because the, the container, the glass, is much more rigid than the water. The skull of a baby is much more rigid than the brain. If you move it very abruptly, you can cause a lot of inner motion of the brain, and that can cause bleeding over the surface of the brain. It can cause tearing of the brain itself. It can cause hemorrhages in the eye. It can cause enough damage to make the baby die. So it's a very serious thing. Abusive head trauma is another name that is applied to injuries that are inflicted to the head of a child. Uh, shaken baby syndrome in the past has been commonly used. In, a, in an overall uh, diagnosis, we usually use more commonly the term abusive head trauma. But basically it means that you've done something to the head of a child, either impacting the head or shaking the child very violently so that the head moves very abruptly. And that is the thing that damages the baby's head. Now, I mentioned earlier that, that uh, it is a common cause, this kind of head injury is a common cause of babies dying. There, not all babies that have this kind of injury die. About 30%, maybe 40% of them die. But another 30, 40, 50% of them are badly damaged, but they survive. And those survivors may be very seriously neurologically damaged. They may be mentally impaired. They may be almost in a vegetative state. They may be blind. They may have all kinds of paralyses. So, so this is a very devastating injury even if the child is able to survive. It is not going to be able to repair its nervous system. By far the number one reason why people lose patience and impulsively reach out and grab a child and shake it or hit it, throw it, is because the baby has been crying, sometimes unrelentingly. And, and many people don't understand that crying is kind of the activity that a baby does. It doesn't mean that it needs something necessarily if it's not time to be fed, if there is not a diaper pin sticking in it, if it's not in some kind of danger, it's fine for a baby to cry. You can just kind of close the door and let it cry. But to many people, when they hear a baby crying, they want to stop the baby from crying and it becomes something personal. So crying is by far the most common initiator of violence towards a young child. When you look at individuals that might do injury like this to a child, by far, uh, unfortunately, what statistics show is that um, males have, a, have a, I guess, a less tolerance for hearing a baby cry, particularly a non-biologically related male, like the mother's boyfriend. Uh, so that is the number one person who might injure a child's head uh, through either impact or shaking. The second most common is the father. The third is a babysitter, 
and the fourth is the mother.